Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I got all this K-beauty stuff, like cool cushion makeup and brightening primers and lip color, eye color. So I wanna do like a K-beauty inspired look. I know it might not be like identical or like super true to K-beauty because I have some old habits in my hands that I just can't stop myself, but we're using all K-Beauty makeup and I'm going for like that beautiful pinky kind of glittery look that I see online a lot and that I've been requested to do a few times for my clients. So if you like this look and you want to hear my story time, then just keep watching. Today we're going to be talking about my upbringing, how I was homeschooled until the fifth, sixth grade-ish and well, how the School for Troubled Girls wasn't kind of like my introduction into the world of religion, how I would, I had always kind of been taught this and just kind of like my kind of weird experience being homeschooled and kind of like my experience living one foot in the real world and one foot into this like cult mentality at home. So if you wanna hear that story time, just keep watching. Now, before we jump into the makeup, we're gonna do a quick message from today's sponsor, which is Strip Makeup. So I got these couple of products that I'm gonna show you in action. And while I show you, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about them. I got the caviar jelly because it looks so freaking awesome. It has these little pomegranate balls. And I'm gonna show you the texture close up because it's just cool. So you just apply it like a cleansing balm and this is supposed to melt away your makeup. I used it this morning, but I wasn't wearing any makeup. Whoa, do you see the little balls popping? So the whole, premise of strip makeup is that it does not strip your skin it strips your makeup and all of these products have hydrating skincare ingredients in them let's really put it to the test by trying to remove this crazy eye makeup i have a feeling that the coconut one is going to be the best for moving hard to budge makeup but who knows? So this is a caviar jelly. And on the other side, I am going to use the coconut one. The texture of this is really cool too. Oh my God. If you like coconut, you would love this. Yeah, the coconut in particular is really eating away all of that eye makeup. I would say this is probably gonna be my first step when I do crazy makeup like this. And then the caviar will probably be for lighter makeup days. This is fun. So these are the reusable washcloths. They come in a package of like seven or eight. And I love a reusable washcloth because I remove makeup a lot. And I don't like it when I'm bent over the sink trying to rinse and there's like water coming down on my arms. So having these is gonna be super clutch. I also really love that my skin doesn't hurt. Like I am not feeling irritated at all. And I only have been wearing this makeup for like maybe an hour and a half, two hours. I also got the makeup remover towelettes and it says that you can use these dry or dampen. So it says that you can make your own makeup wipe with your favorite makeup remover. So I'm gonna use a little bit of cleansing water and use this just to wipe away the skin and see how clean we got. And also to take off some of that remaining glitter. I kind of wanted to keep my mascara for class pass. So I'm gonna wipe it with a wipe instead of aggressively going in with a cleanser. This is working very well for the amount of glitter that I put on my eyes. And I do feel hydrated. I don't feel stripped or dry, which the premise of these products are that they contain skincare that hydrates the skin. And I really do feel hydrated. And this is what was left on the towel. So mostly just a bit of eye makeup. That first pass of those two cleansing butters 
really, really cleansed my skin. So now I'm gonna put a little moisturizer on and call it a day. I have a link for you. It'll be in the comments, but it's right here as well. It's at stripyourmakeup.com slash Emily Harper. So if you wanna pick anything up, you can use my code. And if you don't, that's okay too. Also, just as a last note, these are so cute. Okay, you guys, now let's jump into the glam and everything also will be in the description box below. So thank you guys, thank you Strip Makeup, and now let's get into our look. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I have all this cool new stuff, like all this Korean and Japanese beauty that I got from Yes Style. So I want to do like a full glam with everything on. All this stuff was gifted, but this is not a paid promotion. So let's get into it. I also thought it would be fun to talk about my homeschooling experience. So I think that's what will be the topic for today because it didn't just start at the School for Troubled Girls. Like I was already in a weird ass environment from childhood. So that's that. I'm gonna show you, I think we should start with skincare today. Usually I don't start with skincare, but I did get all this new skincare and I actually, I've tried almost all the makeup, but I've not tried the skincare, so I guess we can do that. This is a serum called Beauty of Joseon and I already washed and like did a little moisturizer today, but can't hurt to layer. I'll just kind of wipe my face down with this strip makeup towelette. There will be a sponsored segment to this video by Strip and you probably already saw it. So let's just wipe down the skin. Nice. And then we'll go in with this serum. So this, I bought it because it has a uh, ginseng and snail mucin, and I love a snaily product. And then I'm gonna top it off with the Claire's Rich Moisturizer Soothing Cream. Usually snail is like really kind of like slimy and has some pull to it. This, this does have some pull to it, so let's see how this goes. There's actually a lot of benefits to snail mucin for the skin. This doesn't actually feel too slimy though. I always do a hydrating serum under a moisturizer because I feel like it just helps my moisturizer to work better. Maybe it's placebo, but I love like the whole K Beauty 12 steps of skincare thing. And I do actually get good results doing that. I think the most necessary point in my skincare routine though is the retinol. Because I have pretty bad acne with untreated skin. I shared about this in the video that went live today. For reference, it's Tuesday. It's called, um, that video is called Makeup I Actually Wear. And I go over like my skincare more in that video. Because I get a lot of questions about it, but Skincare is always something that is just already done and on by the time I start shooting makeup. So I do always really prep the skin. Uh, by the way, this is the Claire Soothing Moist Cream. I use this, uh, I have a mini of this that I keep in my makeup kit, but I got this one for my little sister because she is drier than the frickin' Sahara. I got her one of these serums as well. I think they're only like, I want to say it was like $12, so that's a bargain. Now I kind of want like a K-Beauty inspired look because I got all this, I got all this K-Beauty. Some of it's Japanese, but most of it is Korean. So I want to do kind of like that like pinky glowy, like little bit of glittery kind of look. So I'm going to go in with this. This is the Whip Dream from Kaja in the shade Rose Macaroon. And I'm going to use this as my primary eyeshadow. And we'll also move this down to like cheek and lip later, probably. This is an eye, cheek and lip product. But I know some people get weird about products being multi-use, eye, cheek and lip. 
And to be honest, that's completely fair. So if you feel weird about that, just use it for one thing and don't yell at me. So when I was a kid, I always felt really socially awkward and it was because I didn't actually go to school until the fifth grade. And then when I did go to school in the fifth grade, it was actually meant to be sixth grade, but my parents held me back so that socially I could like do better, which was also very embarrassing to me. I feel like my whole life up until like when I was on my own was just an embarrassment. Like I just never could just be normal like the other kids, like all my friends went to school, I didn't go to school. And then because of I because of me not going to school ever, I always felt like socially challenged when it came connecting to my peers. I was really, really shy. And also I didn't have a lot of confidence because like the way that like, I don't know if you know about attachment styles, but I had a very insecure attachment style with my parents. So I just like always felt weird and out of the loop. And like I had trouble connecting to people. And I think it's because literally like social skills are like a muscle I feel like that you have to like build on. And I didn't have those social skills because I didn't go to school. So when I did finally go to school, I did one year at a Christian academy. And then I did another year. And then I went into the regular public school system. So all in all of like real actual education in actual schools, not in like boarding schools or like homeschooling. I only have six, seventh, eighth, half of ninth, three and a half years of normal education. This is a cool product, by the way. It's the tear eyeliner uh, from Etude and it's in the shade white. And everything I'm using here is from YesStyle and will be linked below. And if you, yeah. And I wanna do a kind of like that K-Beauty style where the glitter is mostly in the center of the eye going up. I got this cool shoe Amura shadow, but I can't find it. It's just a single shadow. I have no idea where I put it, um, which is unfortunate. So yeah, although like I did like a lot of activities, like I was on the swim team and that was kind of like where most of like my socializing came from. I just didn't feel like it was enough. Like I always wished when I was younger that I went to school because all of my friends had been friends with each other like their whole lives. And something I felt like I've always missed out on, um, especially when I was younger, not anymore because now I'm an adult and it doesn't really matter. Uh, because I live in like cities that I didn't grow up in anyway. But I always felt displaced and like everybody else's relationships to each other were closer than the relationships that I had with them. And that's just because like I wasn't there, like I didn't go to normal school and I feel like I was like uprooted a lot. So after four years of finally going, no, three and a half years of finally going to a regular school, then I get sent to Alabama. So like I always felt this sense of like, uh, not having any roots. And even in my early 20s, I still felt pretty upset by that because I felt like I was alone in the world because all my friendships were kind of like all over the place. Like I have a couple friends in Wisconsin. They're not around me. I have a couple friends in like Alabama. I have a couple friends in Georgia, like whoever I got close to at troubled teen schools. Like we didn't get to see each other after the fact because everybody moved back home. So yeah, I'm actually not a huge supporter of homeschooling unless you're like a really good parent and you have a plan and I don't know. Or like I know like some people get taken out of school because of bullying and then homeschooling brings them a lot of peace. So I'm not going to say like I don't like blanket, blanket statements because things are true for me that aren't true for everybody else. But I didn't love being homeschooled. Um, I just, I just feel like it made me kind of an outcast and that's like the worst way to feel when you're a little kitty. Like I, for one, would never homeschool my kids. They'll be going into school and I just want to create like an environment if I had kids where they felt like everybody else. Also, I'm kind of putting this white stuff like everywhere, like 
focusing it on the center of the eyes, but also I wanna do like the inner corner. And I also wanna do that eye bag thing. Like I feel like in K-Beauty, they always like put a dark shade under here, but I wonder if I should do my concealer before I do that. I feel like I almost should, I don't know. Let's do a little wing while we think about that. And I didn't actually get any eyeliners from Yes Style, so we'll just use this Lime Crime one. I really like these formulas. They don't like chip or anything. And the brush is really nice. I kind of miss having little brushes like these. I think they're just great. I don't know too, like when I was growing up, the reputation for like homeschoolers, like we would go to these meetups and stuff and the, my mom tried to keep us like somewhat like normal looking, but all the other kids at the meetups, like their moms and stuff would be in these like long floor length skirts. They would be like super kind of like weird and detached from the rest of the world. And we were like that to an extent in the weirdness and like we weren't allowed to like watch um, like secular TV, like my mom would kind of let us, but at the same time not, and my dad really wouldn't. So we weren't even allowed to watch Barney because there was magic in it. And I always felt like it was just kind of like a weird contrast between like me and other kids my age because I made a lot of like normal friends who had normal childhood experiences and stuff because I went to swim team and then we always lived in like apartment complexes or like on streets with a lot of kids around and stuff. So I always had like a lot of like kids from just like being outside and stuff. But I also like, there was a line that I wasn't allowed to cross with them, like one. I was at my friend's house, her name was Lexi. This was one of my best friends uh, in childhood. And when we moved away from that neighborhood, I pretty much never saw this girl again, but her name was Lexi and that was my bestie. And I went over to her house and I wasn't allowed to watch like, like anything like Harry Potter, Hocus Pocus, I was not allowed to watch any of that. That was like strictly forbidden in my home. But I went over there. Also, I'm just gonna use some clusters today. I went over there and we watched Hocus Pocus and I knew, like me and my little sister were both there and I knew I wasn't allowed to watch that but I obviously wasn't gonna tell my mom. And then when we got home, my mom said, what did you guys do at Lexi's and my little sister? She was just forever the little narc um, when she was little. She said, we watched a bad movie and my mom's face, mm, she, her face went, she like pursed her lips, you know? I just remember these little details because for some reason these were like highlights in my life. Like what I really remember at that age, I don't remember anything else but this. I was maybe like 10. Um, my mom pursed her lips and then she got the calendar and she grounded me. I don't know if she grounded the little one, but she got the calendar out and we weren't allowed to go to anybody's house for like two weeks or talk on the phone or anything. We only had landlines at the time, of course, but we weren't allowed to do anything. And I was so upset just for watching Hocus Pocus. And like the little girl, uh, her, her family was always like super sweet to me. And I'm sure like they had no idea that I went home and got grounded for like the next two or three weeks for that. I'm sure they just had no idea. Also, I'm not really sure how long the grounding was. I just remember the calendar and I remember it was like an extended period of time that I wasn't allowed to go and do anything else. So yeah, so I could never just do what my friends could do. And even if I did do what they did, then I get in trouble later. Um, and my parents were also, uh, should I go there? My parents were also, um, they were like big fans of corporal, corporal punishment. Not my mom as much. I don't really have memories of my mom like spanking me so much, but my dad would. So if I broke any of these rules or like say he came home from work, he was gone at work a lot, but say he came home from work and I was like uh, watching a show that I really shouldn't be. And sometimes I didn't, 
know like what was out of bounds or not. Like, because we hid Napoleon Dynamite, we would always turn it off and sneak it. But Napoleon Dynamite is like a pretty kid friendly movie at the same time. So it's just kind of weird. So he, we would get like belted if we, um, if we like kind of like disobeyed these unwritten rules. So me and my sisters really tried to kind of follow the rules, but at the same time, like just being over at a friend's house and seeing a movie, like you just couldn't always, you couldn't always determine like what was actually wrong and what wasn't. And it was also weird. It was weird with that kind of combination of being out and connecting with people who live kind of normal lives, but being, um, but being, but coming from a home where we had really strict rules within that home, it was kind of almost like a secret. But, um, but at the same time, sometimes my friends from outside my home would like get little snippets of what was actually going on. Um, and also I think it's funny too, because looking back, I had like lots of friends from the street or eventually school friends when I started going to school. Um, and I wonder like what their experience was with my family because at the time I thought that my family, like that was my normal. So I thought that what was going on was perfectly normal, but I wonder what they would have to say like nowadays because my dad was really harsh with me and he would like, he would like punish me like in front of my friends. Like, I don't know, like, like I had a boyfriend over once and he was, um, my dad always tried to embarrass me in front of boys. This is like why I still think I'm like not that close to my dad because he embarrassed me in a lot of ways. And you guys know, I, I always say I hate being embarrassed. So like, I had my boyfriend over, we were sitting on the couch. There was a stain on the carpet, but I don't know why it was there. I didn't do it. And my dad comes bounding in the room, sees, this, sees us, looks at the carpet, sees the stain, and then makes me like get down on my hands and knees and like try to scrub the carpet and like is yelling at me in front of my little boyfriend who's like, my family doesn't act like this. Like what the hell? And that was when I was 13. And I'm actually surprised that I was allowed to have a boyfriend because I wasn't even allowed to watch Barney when I was like a little kid. I guess this is just becoming like a blanket video of like what I remember from my childhood because it doesn't just start at the school for troubled girls. Like that's kind of like why when I got there and when I assimilated like so easily and quickly, it's because like this wasn't the first thing that I'd ever been, tr this wasn't the first time that I'd ever been treated poorly. And this wasn't the first time that I had ever heard this belief system. Like I'd been hearing this belief system and I always shied away from it. But now I was in a place where they were actively telling me like on a cult compound that like I was gonna die and go to hell if I didn't like get my, repent for my sins like right now. So it's just kind of like a lot going on. So I, I wouldn't say that like any of my kind of childhood was normal. It definitely got way weirder at the school for troubled girls, but there was a lot of dysfunction in my home as it was. Like, first of all, I wasn't in school for all this time. So I also didn't know, like, I never really like knew like how I was supposed to be treated, what my education should be like. Cause when I wasn't in school and I was homeschooling, I was teaching myself. That's why I like have zero education. When I did finally go to school, I felt so behind. I didn't even know the capital of the state that I lived in. And that was in the fifth grade. Like we were just going by these rule books and my parents, especially when I was little, they were always focused on like, not for like training us for success, same with the School for Troubled Girls, but they were training us um, like to save our souls. Like they were training us for the afterlife. So like, especially as I got older, I started to feel like I had no life training. And um, I feel like it resulted in me making so many poor decisions. I think I'm just gonna do some mascara on the lower lash line and not do too much more. I've got that pink and that glitter. And I think I'm gonna leave it at that because I'm kind of liking how this is looking. I don't know if you guys have ever heard, I'm gonna use the Kaja mascara. This has like three things in it and it's pretty good mascara. There's a clear and a lengthening and then like 
a volumizing little bit. But I don't know if you guys have ever heard that, seen that show with um, the 12 kids, the Plath, Welcome to Plathville. But I can relate to their story so much because even though I wasn't like living on a compound, we had, my parents acted really similarly to them. Like they were also homeschooled, yet they were homeschooled their whole lives. Thank God I got like a little bit of normalcy. And then they weren't allowed to listen to music. They didn't know a lot of popular songs and films. Like I could really relate to that. I could also relate to how their parents were raised in normal homes, but still insisted on raising their children like this because like my parents didn't come from extremely religious homes. They kind of like got extremely religious in their early 20s and got married. Well, my mom, my mom probably around 17 and my dad probably around 18. So I guess like in their early, like just before adulthood and then they stuck with it. And I can also relate to the plast too because my parents got divorced and went against everything that they've ever kind of said that they believed in and so did the Plathville families. If you guys haven't seen that series, you have to watch it. It is so interesting and it's also kind of sad, but like as the kids like grow up and leave their home and start to like evolve and find their true identities, it's like actually becomes like a really happy story. So let's do this moisture milk base. I think I've shown this a couple times in shorts. I really like it. It's like this light pink um, makeup primer base. And I don't really mess around with primers that much. Like I will wear a primer from time to time, but it's not something I really subscribe to. But this one I like because you guys know I'm always a little bit too yellowy orange because I'm always having a spray tan on and I don't like to actually like be the color that I am. And this helps balance that. It's like a bright pink. It even makes me look a little bit whitish, but that's okay because, um, because the foundation I'm using today is way too dark and yellow. So it kind of balances out like my skin getting all muddy. And also I have this cool foundation from Shu Amura Unlimited Glow. This is actually Japanese, not K-Beauty, but it's too dark. So I'm gonna mix some cover effects like white drops into it. The custom cover allows you to like adjust tones and coverage and everything. And you can see this is just like way too dark. So let's try to brighten it with this and hopefully the base will brighten it a good amount too. I'm gonna put like just a few drops and see what happens. I always feel like I do a better job of like telling <laughs> the stories that I, oh my gosh, it's so dark. Uh, what should I do? I'll try this again. I need one of those MAC makeup white bases. Because by now, like mixing all of this into it, I don't know if I'm gonna get a full, I don't think I can even get a full read on this formula. I think I'm not gonna wear this. I think I'm gonna wear this other cushion makeup that I got as well. Handy strip towel. I like these cause you can like throw them in the wash. And I'm always stripping makeup off my face. Okay, let's grab that cushion. Moonshot, okay, I actually really like this. I did a couple of videos, but I didn't post them because I have like a whole backup of all sorts of videos right now. Um, but this is actually a perfect color for me and I love the formula. It's in 201, it has SPF 50, love that. And then of course it's a cushion makeup, comes with a little pad. Ah, and here's the cushion. Literally my only qualms with cushion makeup is that you can just not fit that much of the actual base into the cushion, but I still really, really like this formula and it also looks very natural. It just makes my skin look good, which is like the point of makeup, right? Like it shouldn't look makeup-y, it should just make you look good in my opinion. So yeah, it's interesting whenever I try to describe my childhood and like my upbringing to other people because part of it was very, very normal because I was outside of the house a lot, unsupervised. Like I'm a millennial, like our parents let us kind of open the doors and leave all day and not come back for meals or for check-ins or anything. Like we were 
so unsupervised, but then within the home, it was very, very kind of strict, confusing corporal, corporal punishment. We got belted. We got physically hurt quite a lot. Um, and it was just kind of like a mishmash of experiences because if you would have asked me like before I had processed kind of like all the stuff that went on at home, I would have said like, yeah, I had a great childhood because I was outside playing with my friends all the time. But then also part of my childhood was like being berated for being ungodly. Oh, that's a nice glow to the skin. I love this. Being berated, getting woken up by my dad saying, get your ass up, we're going to church. He would always say, get your ass up. Like, who does that to little girls? I swear to God. Then also, I did get a shoe, Imora um, Unlimited Concealer as well, but it's a little yellow. The shades that they had, I couldn't really tell what I was ordering. So I'm going to mix a little of my KVD into it. And to be honest, this formula, it's just okay. And it's not something that I would really like recommend you buy. And I'll let you know if there's anything else in here that I don't really like, but this is the main thing. This, and I'm not really sure about the foundation because the color's so wrong. So uh, these are things that I don't really vouch for, but I'm using because I want it to get used up. Can't return it because I got it for free. <laughs> And I like blending with this little poof. I like this. Also, I haven't had lunch and it's like lunchtime, so I keep forgetting what I'm saying. So I'm so sorry for this shit posting. Um, I just really wanted to make sure that I get, I feel like I, I do better like when I film at night, but I can't film at night because I've been late on a couple videos lately. So now my prioritizing has gone from me filming when I'm in the perfect, perfect mood to me actually having an upload on Saturday. So, so yeah, like we also had to sneak the magic school bus. Did you guys watch the magic school bus? It's like an educational show. And my mom had to sneak it to us because my dad would lose his goddamn mind if we were watching anything with magic. Like it was crazy. Their rules and stuff, they also got looser as time went on. So when we became teenagers, we actually, like, me and my sisters, especially my older sister, Hannah, who passed, she was, like, really, really rebellious. And I think it's because of all the rules and stuff that we had in place. And I kind of tried to follow her lead, which is what got me sent away as well. So as we got older, it was like pretty much impossible because by that time we were in public school and stuff, it was pretty much impossible to control us like in the tiny ways that they did before. And this is mostly aimed at my dad, but my mom was married to him and she was kind of like under his thumb. Like she, she wanted us to, I think, have a little bit more of a normal life, but she was also pro homeschooling and stuff. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a strange kind of like a strange mishmash of beliefs and opinions. And it's also kind of hard to determine even as an adult, like was that my mom or my dad? Because I got in trouble with both of them, but my dad was the one who would really like hit you with a switch. This is like some 1960s stuff. Getting switched and stuff, we did. I just had a great idea. Let's put this white ColourPop shadow stick in the waterline. I'm loving these shadow sticks. They sent me, okay, so they put the shadow sticks on sale for a dollar. So I bought them all and then they discontinued the ones that I bought and they sent me the whole collection. So this is from the new collection. So you can actually buy this one. And then the old ones, I'm gonna be tagging all these discontinued products. I'm really messing up my concealer, but it's not set, so I can just blend it back in. But yeah, so as we got older, like me and my sisters, we all kind of like, not like retaliated, but like rebelled. And then that ended poorly anyway, because me and Hannah got sent away. Um, the other two sisters, people always ask if they got sent away 
They didn't because they were really involved in sports. So something about me and Hannah, we leaned a little bit more artistic and a little bit more um, like gravitating towards friends and stuff. Whereas my other two sisters, well, they were really social and had lots of friends, but they were really involved in sports. And so something about that dynamic just kind of like saved them from being taken away. It seemed like they weren't doing the same that me and Hannah were, but really we were all doing like, we were all in the same boat. Like we were all kind of rebellious in our own ways. And my little sister was like partying and stuff, but because she was partying more like jockey and I was partying in more of like a depressive way, then it kind of like got skirted over what she was doing and all the focus was on me. Uh, and then after Hannah got sent away, my parents hadn't been focusing on me because they'd been focusing on her. So then they like combined all their energy to like watch me. And that's when I really got in trouble and got sent away. Oh, here it is. I got this little blush called Bare Cheek by I'm Meme. And I love the color of it. It's called, uh, what, what color is it? I think it's called like Bare Almond. Oh, I don't think that like, it's really popular to do like tons of bronzer and stuff with uh, K Beauty. I feel like they usually took, go for like more of like a fair skin look. So I'm gonna keep it like soft and peachy and I'm only gonna contour, which I got this cool contour that I'll show you as well. But yeah, it was really interesting because growing up, like we weren't allowed to like read certain books that were like required in school. You know, how there's like certain books you're supposed to read. And my mom took my sister out of health class. She didn't want her worrying. Uh, she didn't want her learning about like, I, I don't know, like sex ed. She didn't want her in that class. But then at the same time, there was like a confusing kind of like stand, double standard because at home we were allowed to um, watch like all these scary end of times movies, which in my opinion are way more harmful than just learning about your body and reproduction and stuff. Uh, this is the art class contour. There's two shades. This is the lightest one and this is cool. So we're gonna do this. And we also had these like tracks floating around everywhere. I will, I will grab one. I literally stole some when I went to visit family last because I was like, this is proof. This is proof of my weird existence. Um, I'll grab and show after I do this contour. But um, we were, were allowed to like read tracks that talked about like prostitutes and drug addicts and like people on the street and like street life as long as, and then the people would like come to salvation in the tracks. So I guess like my parents thought like because the people like came to salvation, like it was okay for kids to read, but it was not. They were like very adult themes. And we also, there were all these books um, on the ministry that my parents were affiliated with uh, called like Debbie and Carmen. I don't know if any like church kids, uh, well like ex-church kids, because I know a lot of you have similar upbringing to me. I don't know if you've ever seen these books before but they're like the same thing like the girl will be like a street walker and then they'll like rehab her and get her clean and like now she's like a christian like those kind of books but it's funny because like when i was a kid i would read all the books but i would only read the interesting parts about like the girls out on the street doing drugs and drinking and selling their bodies and then i would stop before they even got saved because it was like it was a full book and i just wanted the juicy details it was like reading a like a magazine or something you just you only read the good parts i did a little bit too much on my nose But yeah, I really like this contour. It's definitely a cool shade. It's not like warming, but it works. Uh, it, it does its job, you know? And I didn't get any highlight, but I wonder if I have a highlight that I can use. Let me take a peek. At that, I want I really wanna show you the track. So I'm gonna get one of the tracks that I have that I stole uh, when I was in Arkansas. Okay, so this one's called The Attack. And I have more of these, but this is just the one that I could find offhand. And it's just like, 
I mean, even that is scary, like fire and brimstone. Let's see where it gets good. Talking about you shall surely die. <laughs> They're like little story storybooks, but really, really graphic and crass. This one's not even that bad. I have worse ones. Yeah, somebody getting set on fire. The devil. I have worse ones. Let me see if I can find one. Nobody else can save you. Trust Jesus today. Dear God, I'm a sinner in need forgiveness. <laughs> I can't find the other ones, but I'll share them in like the next video or something if you wanna see them. That one actually wasn't that bad. Usually they're a lot worse. Like there was one where they put this guy in jail and then he became a Muslim and then and that, and then he like started plotting to murder his family. So not only is it like racist and like Islamophobic, it, it, there's just so many problems with it. So many problems, but then like also they show this guy like dying and going to hell, it's crazy. So that was the kind of reading material that I was allowed as a child. So it's just like kind of like ass backwards if you ask me. And my mom really doesn't like it when I share these stories. Um, but that, that was my life. She hates it when I talk about this because I made one video that she happened to see. Let me continue with the makeup too. Uh, I, oh, I do want to show you this heart blush. So I already have blush on, but let's add this so that you can see it. Cause it's really fun. So it's like a little cheeky thing, a little, um, there's like a little thing of blush and then you dip the heart into the blush and you stamp it on your face. Uh, the other colors actually work better because they're brighter. This is just like more of a sheer color, but I think it's really cute. And you don't have to use this. You could use a regular brush. A lot of the things I bought from this uh, site too were just cause they're cute. But yeah, my mom gets really upset when I talk about these things. Uh, I feel like, I don't know why, because there we used to read tracks with like, and even like books too, like religious books, and there would be like an image of like Baphomet. And she got really triggered when I said the word Baphomet. She was like, why would you put that online? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I'm just like, I don't know, That's that was my experience. Like that's what I saw in my own home as a child. So it's funny like, cause all me and my sisters have kind of like different experiences with our parents. And even my parents, I guess, have different opinions on what was going on. Maybe it was my dad's, maybe it was hers. I don't know, but she doesn't like it when I talk about it. <laughs> so I also got this Kaja, look at this, boing, 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 boing. I got this thing and I'm gonna tell you right now, it's really hard to get the powder out. That's powder down there. And then this is like the little boing applicator. So I think I'm actually not gonna use much of this, but I will use a different brush and put it on under my eyes. This is purely just for cute purposes and it's not my favorite Kaja product because I actually really love this brand. Uh, so yeah. It's a little pink powder and then they have like a banana one and a yellow one. And pink powder is usually best for the under eye. It's not too pink though. Like I don't really notice, like it doesn't really do a lot, but it's really cute. So yeah, that was my upbringing. I was homeschooled. Then when I did go to school, uh, I loved it. I was scared because I'd never been to school. Oh my God, the panic I had just from not ever going to school to all of a sudden going, first we went to a one year at Christian school and then we went right into public education. And I already had friends from my street who I like played with outside, which is why like half of me thinks my childhood was quite good because I was with them. Um, and then half of me remembers like the horrors of like being alone, like specifically like with my dad. Um, so yeah. This is Kaja. Uh, this is the same stuff that we put on our eyes that now I'm putting on my lips. So don't have a cow because I'm just doing this. So like if I got an eye infection, it would just be my problem. The people on the Flip app, I posted like a, a product that's eye, cheek and lip and everybody had panics in the comments. 
you're gonna get an eye infection. Like I'm applying this. I never put makeup on a dirty face. Like I always have a very clean face. So like if it happens, it happens, but I don't see myself doing this too often and just like don't worry about what other people do if you're like having a panic about that. Like I agree, it totally could happen. You could get an eye infection. So like don't do as I do, but like I'm gonna do it. I love this color actually. This is a shade um, Rose Macaroon, like I said earlier. And I usually don't really dabble in these colors, but I kind of am liking this look. I also need to do a, a full video of like, I don't know if I've done this before. I might have. I like that kind of bitten look that I see all the KV girls doing. Like you kind of blend it, you know, like soften it. Mmm, this is pretty. Wow. I love Kaja. I've tried lots of their stuff. Like, I was really into their concealer for a long time. I still do like that concealer, but I move on from things pretty quickly because of my job. I wonder if I should just put a little touch of something light and make it like a gradient, but it has to be matte. My lips are a little dry, but maybe a little concealer. That's really gonna dry them out. Let's try it. Usually you do like a reverse gradient. And I know this is not the right way because like if it were truly a K beauty look, it would be darker in the center of the lip, but I can't help my white girl tendencies. Here in the US, you know, like we want bigger lips. Over there, they want smaller lips. It's just different. My lips are so dry. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, well. So this is the look. Thank you guys for getting ready with me. And yeah, this was one for the book. So this is kind of like, explains kind of how like I assimilated so quickly because I'd already been told these things and I've been reading these tracks and stuff and then I was homeschooled. So I was already like pretty indoctrinated. Like I had one foot in the regular world and then like one foot at home in my kind of like weird experience. So let me know if you can relate to any of this. I know a lot of you, even though like you didn't go to like a school for troubled girls or maybe you did, um, or maybe you just went there and your parents weren't religious, but I feel like a lot of us kind of connect and relate on these like weird experiences. So if you can, uh, drop me a comment below. I love you guys. Care about you so much. Thanks for all your support. Um, we're almost to 200K. When we do get to 200K, I'm going to do a giveaway, but I still have to figure out like how to do a giveaway. So I'm working on it, but somebody's going to win a bunch of fun stuff from me. So thanks for watching and getting ready with me. I love you dearly and I'll see you for the next one. And again, thank you for to Strip Makeup for sponsoring this video.